So a question I get a lot has to do with 4x4, and before I get to that, if you don't know how to solve a 4x4 cube, then here's basically how it works. So for example, this is a centerpiece of a 3x3, so that's the white center right there. So then you'd make all the rest of the centers as well. And then you'd pair up all of the edge pieces. So now it's like one, two, three pieces across, and that makes it the same as a 3x3 and then you'd solve it the same way you would for a three by three. The question I get a lot is why do we reduce it to a three by three stage and not down to a two by two? So you can notice if you just turn across the middle, then you get what's basically a two by two. So this is like the same as scrambling a two by two. So I always felt that reducing to two by two stage must be harder, nobody does it, so therefore it must be worse. But I never actually like really tried to do this to figure out what makes it so hard. So instead of like making up a reason of why this is bad, I decided I would just try it for myself as a challenge and see how it goes. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm gonna solve a four by four by reducing it to a two by two first and then solving it like that. This could go really badly. Okay, I'll try my best to explain what I'm doing, but I've never done this before, so I don't know how that's gonna go. Okay, so first I'll start with a pair, I guess. I think it would be easier to work in one, uh, or like 2D at a time rather than like, uh, for example, okay, let me just attach something and then I'll keep going with that thought. Okay, so here, I've made like this sort of thing and I have to add another piece here. So white and blue, that's this one. So, okay, so when I do this, then the center moves. So my original thought was it would be easier to make one dimensional things and put them together because this is two dimensional. But if I have this separate from these two, then I can put those together and there we go. So now I have a square, which is 2D, um, but along this side, it's one dimensional. So I can then make, I guess, this part to finish off that piece. Yeah, I've given this more thought than I probably should have, but uh, okay, so white, white, orange, and orange. So let's get the white and the orange, and then the white orange is this one. Yeah, yeah, so I can attach them like that. There, there's the first piece, pretty easy. Okay, so these two made a pair. I just paired them up like F2L. Uh, you have to make sure that you don't pair it up with the wrong piece. So like, for example, this one, yellow, blue, yellow, blue. Uh, I can't pair them up like that. And if you put it here, it's just flipped. So this is a pair, and then I think I'll make it on the opposite side of this so I have more room. Uh, okay, so I need a blue center attached to the orange blue piece. This orange blue, could this be the right one? Yes. Okay, so I want a blue center attached to it. Try to make sure I don't disturb that. I'll just remember that's in the back right. So there's my square. I need orange and yellow. So, so far this is going pretty well. Better than I expected actually. So orange and yellow, need the orange and yellow piece. So this attached to the yellow center. Um, okay, well, I was attaching it to this one. Make that, perfect. And now I have two pieces. I'll preserve them in the back and I'll work here. So where can I get another pair? Um, these two pieces. Uh, okay, so maybe I'll make the yellow green. So this can be flipped and put right here. So these two are already correct. Then I need the yellow green piece, this one. What, no, I'm dumb, this is already yellow green. Okay, <laughs> I do this all the time with like FMC, finding pairs. I always go for the wrong color. So yellow green's already here. So no, I'm trying to make like orange, no, green attached to orange green. Yeah, I kind of skipped a step. So green, orange green, that's the wrong one. So I'll attach it to this one, hide this away. Okay, so I can do this and Wait, that's wrong. Um, I can use this one instead. There we go. Uh, I can hide this. Yellow, orange. Yellow, orange. Here's yellow. Wait, I want it like this, yellow, orange. So, uh, let's see, how can I do this? I can take the orange up. I'll move this, well, some yellow over. I need a, that color needs to get moved. Oh, how do I change where this color goes? Okay, just like this, I can just move that block away. So I've made this, I can attach them together. Nice, okay, three out of four pieces for the bottom layer, bottom two layers. Kind of like I'm doing F2L, because it's two layers, you know? Uh, moving on to one more piece, this one might be a little harder. I have a pair already, uh, and I wanna make a red and red blue. So, is red-blue the right one? Yeah, 
So this one, uh, let's see. Okay, I'll separate them by moving this into the bottom. And this needs to attach to red over here. So I feel like anything I do, it just breaks something from the bottom. I could use commutators, which uh, I don't want to use. I want to do this as intuitively as possible, but I don't know. I might have to at some point. Okay, okay, I made the pair. And this one. So uh, just move them around a bit. All right, that works. I can pair up this with this like that. Nice. Now I need yellow, blue with yellow, blue in between. I got the yellow and the blue, that's nice. I just need a yellow, blue here. I really wanna do this intuitively. <laughs> okay, I can change this orientation however I like, but I don't know if that's helping. Um, if I can somehow move this one, this blue one in here. Okay, I think I got it. If I pair these two up, I break this pair right here. But then, I don't, I don't know if that's gonna work. Okay, I was, I was thinking I'm gonna insert this one here and solve it, but then the other one just gets broken. So, okay, so I just inserted it a different way. Um, so I just took this one and if I insert it from here into here, then I get this one broken with the first move. But if I move it here, then this one gets to be preserved as I do the insert. Okay, and then I can put this one in. Sweet, I've got the first two layers of two by two pieces. Uh, the, the last two layers, I cannot imagine I can still do anything intuitive considering how restricted I already felt on that last pair. Now I don't even have a slot in here I can like um, throw pieces in. Kind of feels like I'm doing last layer of a 3x3 already. Like how am I gonna, I know I haven't tried anything yet, but I can just feel it. Like, okay, I need to pair up this one with this one, right? How the heck am I gonna do that? Like literally any move I do besides just like, you know, dancing around the top is going to break something I've already made. You know, maybe I'm just not being clever, but I have not figured out how to get this one here without kind of cheating and just using commutators. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to use commutators. So uh, I've been mentioning it a lot, what a commutator is. Um, I'll just actually show you on a different cube first. So I'll show you an example of an edge commutator. So here, I'm moving around three pieces at once, and this can be done with for corners, edges, or centers. For any piece type, you can do just a three cycle that affects nothing else. I'll show you the basic idea of how it works because I suspect I'll be using it a lot. Hopefully you can get it. If you really wanna actually know how this works completely, then you can go watch the tutorial. But here, I'll show you this example. So this one needs to go to here because it's white red. Then this one needs to go here and this needs to go here. So that's a three cycle. And what I can do is figure out one move that can solve one of them. So that's gonna be this. Once this is solved, I need a way to also put this one into the same spot. So it's just like, this one solved, this one got kicked out, the only remaining piece needs to also go to that spot. So the way it's gonna go there, you could re recognize that FR actually puts it there, but we have to be specific about how that's done. Uh, so since the first move touched this slice layer, then nothing else in this slice layer is allowed to change except for the piece I put in. So if you look at this piece, for example, FR just takes it out. So that slice layer got changed, that doesn't work. But what I'm gonna do instead is take this one, put it in here with R prime FR. And now this, or everything in the slice layer is still the same as it was before. Then I will just take each of those two things I did and undo the first one and then undo or reverse the second one and then that solves a three cycle. So I'll be using that for the edges or wings and the centers. So let's see, I want this one over here and I need to pick a third piece to cycle with and that can just be any piece. I'm just gonna pick this one because it follows a similar thing to what I was saying for the previous one. So this one needs to go here, which needs to go here. So I can move this one to here first, then get this one there as well. So that's the first thing, move this one over, which can be like, uh, this, and then undo and undo. There we go. And I haven't touched anything else. All right, get ready for a lot of that. All right, so this center needs to go to here and I can do a similar idea where by moving this one up to here, um, then this one over to here. So I can get this one to here first, then get this one to the same spot without touching anything else in that layer. So that's gonna look like that. Nothing in the layer has changed except for this piece. Then undo and undo. There it is, next one. This to this to this. So I can move uh, 
this one to here first, and then this undo, undo. That didn't work, let me, okay, so I think I just did the wrong order, I'll just do it again. Okay, cool, <laughs> I've solved another piece. Uh, this is completely pointless, and it's more obvious how pointless this is when you consider that instead of using commutators to put pieces in a very specific location to be solved later, I could just put them in the solved spots. So I mean, if I just built the first two layers intuitively and did commutators on the rest of the cube, then I'm basically spending less effort on this, and I don't reduce it to a 2x2, two two, I just solve the whole thing. Pretty dumb now, but I guess I'm too deep into it. Okay, I messed some stuff up, it's back now. I made a bit of progress, I guess. Uh, that might have been by accident. Let's see, so yellow green, this one needs to go to here. I can then swap it with this one as well. So get this one up, move this one in as well, undo and undo. By the way, commutators are a really useful concept for fewest moves and for advanced blindfolded for the three style method. So it's not some useless random cube theory knowledge I have here. This is actually something that could be useful. That's a pair, but this is better. So I think I'll just work on this one. Yeah, this corner's twisted. So I'll twist these two and that will solve them. So if this one twists this way, this one twists this way. Uh... Nice, white blue edge right there, which is this one. I can swap this, this, this. Uh, let's see. Okay, so blue to here to here. So I can get blue up first and um, it might make more sense how that works from this side. Put blue in, back up, there it is. Get the other one in and then undo, undo. All right, I'm down to my last piece. So green needs to go here and red needs to go here. Okay, so this is actually kind of interesting. I didn't talk about how to just swap two pieces. In fact, that's not what we're gonna do here. So if this red one goes here and this red one comes here, then we get a red here and the green one lastly goes here. So if you do this, this, this as a cycle, then because two of the colors are the same, it looks like when I'm done, I'm just gonna have swap two centers, but actually one of the red ones went here and one of the red ones went here. So it is a three cycle. Okay, so this one to here to here, I can move this one up first like this. Move the other one in, undo, undo. Oh uh, no, these two edges need a swap. Okay, when you have a two swap, then that is parity. I didn't think there was gonna be able to be parity on this because you can just turn the middle and this is what usually causes parity, but this is annoying. I did not expect it to end up like this. Okay, I just need to practice for one second. Pure parity. I'm just doing slice moves on the normal parity alloc. And then at the end, I need to do, after the alloc's done, it's not actually done. This, this, you two. Okay, that swaps two wings. It looks like it flipped, but actually these two each swapped places. I actually have a whole video just talking about that. Okay, so these two need a swap. I need to set them up next to each other, do the alloc, put them back, and hope, just hope I don't mess that up. Um, I'm gonna put them next to each other. I got, gotta remember this. Um, I'm gonna do R, B, and then little L. So undo would be like that. So, okay, now they're next to each other and I, and I need to swap them with the parity alg. Wish me luck. And then, what was it? U2, R prime L, U2. Oh my God, it swaps centers around it as well. <laughs> so that's called a non-center safe parity alg because it doesn't put the centers in the right spot. Like it must've just swapped some centers I didn't realize. So that's okay, I'll just fix these two. So this one goes to here and then the yellow cannot go straight back here because that's a two swap again. So yellow to here and then this yellow to here. I move this yellow to here, move the orange one up as well and then undo and undo. Wow, all that effort for what? I actually forgot that I was trying to reduce to a two by two stage. This is so stupid. Okay, so I guess I'm solving like a two by two now. Okay, that was definitely not worth it. Okay, so now you know why we don't reduce to a two by two stage instead of three by three, because it is just horrible. 
So leave a like for my efforts. Just kidding, just link this video to anyone if they ever ask the question, why don't we reduce to a two by two? Because I think this is a pretty good explanation. So if you wanna learn more cube theory, like how commutators work or why certain positions are impossible, then check out one of these videos on the end screen. Thanks for watching. I hope you had fun, cause I did not. And I'll see you guys next time.